As you work with images in Aurora HDR, ideally you'll give it bracketed photos, a series of exposures captured at slightly different settings. Usually the shutter speed is the key variable here. Now you can open these with file open and browse or just drag the images onto the application icon. I'll choose file open and just navigate to a folder of images. In this case, I'm gonna open up the raw files. Now, if we sort this, I can easily select all of those images. Or if you're in icon view, same thing, you might need to lasso or hold down the shift key to click on the range that you want. When you're ready, click the open button. Aurora will present you with a new dialog and it will attempt to read the exposure value. In this case, the base exposure is right here. I had set the exposure compensation here while shooting in aperture priority mode. This let me get the base exposure and I told it to slightly overexpose. That's because we were shooting in a very dark interior that didn't have any available light except for this single window and some light coming from behind me. The camera then underexposed by two stops. So subtracting two exposure stops from 0.7 gives me negative 1.3. Subtract two more and it's negative 3.3. You'll see going the opposite direction of leaving the shutter open longer, the camera overexposes and each of these subsequent exposures reveals more details in the dark shadows. If you are confident that the image was shot from a rock solid tripod, you can leave alignment unchecked. But if you're any concern, in this case I was using a lightweight tripod, so I'll check this, the alignment option will attempt to align things so it's precise. From the settings menu here, there are other choices. I don't need to worry about ghost reduction here because there's nothing moving in the scene. But I will take advantage of color denoise and chromatic aberration removal because of the bright backlit area. Now, when I click Create HDR, it's going to analyze those five images, attempt to align them, and load them as a new single HDR file ready for processing. You can track what's happening in the status here. For example, it's switched to raw processing where it's doing that color denoise and decoding each of the raw files. Opening up raw files takes a little bit longer, but the improvement in image quality is worth it in my opinion. There we go. Let's go with a simple option here and we'll choose an interior setting and I'm going to go with an option here for indoor balanced look and close my presets. And what you'll see is that the HDR image did a great job. Earlier, you might have noticed that the window was totally blowing out on the single RAW file. But here, we're able to look out the window and actually see the exterior. Now I can continue to recover highlights and later on you'll learn about advanced options like adjustment layers so we can further refine this zone, but this makes it very easy to start to deal with the base image. We can also apply a little bit of HDR enhance and I'm gonna gently lift the overall exposure. And what we now have here is a scene that shows a tremendous amount of detail. We haven't taken advantage of a lot of other options. You'll see that there are extra settings here for color and fixing skies and boosting details. But in general, if we compare the before and the after, you'll see that the high dynamic range image is able to latch onto those details. Now, let me turn off some of the other settings here. We'll explore these more later, but I'm just gonna reduce all of these other options beyond the basic HDR processing. You'll see in this case, nothing else is happening except for a tone curve, which is a very standard adjustment, a little vignette, which we could take off for a moment, and the HDR basic. Still, with the before and the after, you'll notice that five exposures shows a lot more detail than one exposure. And this really is the beauty of HDR, the ability to find the key and best parts of each image and bring them back together. In this example, particularly because we looked at it as both a single image, a single raw file, and a raw bracketed series, I hope you can see the advantages of working both with raw files and particularly with brackets. The more information you give your camera, the more information you can give to the computer, the better results you get. 
Now, there is such a thing as too much detail, and you don't need to shoot 15 brackets to cover a scene. But five or seven brackets for even a tough exposure will give the computer a ton of information to work with and make it that much easier to get professional results.